Welcome back YouTube. We are creating another video for you guys on Electron Byte. Um, so in this video, we'll be going over setting up Electron Byte, um, kind of talking about the differences between Electron Byte and using Electron with Webpack, um, as well as just kind of like what Electron really is, um, if you've never used it before. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started by talking more or less about what Electron is um, for those people that haven't used it. So Electron allows you to build uh, modular websites uh, or modular desktop applications um, using the Electron framework. So all these like super nice looking applications you see like VS Code here or here, um, this uses Electron. Um, this is built upon the Electron framework, which is a free open source framework for anyone to use. Um, there's tons of apps that use it, like Slack is built upon Electron. Um, and it's a very, very good framework. Um, so basically how Electron works as a backend with Node.js that allows for like file system access and stuff like that. And then you have a renderer side, which runs purely on HTML and JavaScript. Um, there is intermediaries there, like middleware that uh, is called IPC, um, which allows you to communicate from the front end to the back end um, through IPC communication. So what we're going to go ahead and start by doing is we're going to init this package. Um, so if we run npm create electron tech byte, right? this will create our electron byte thing. And we have three options here. So we can choose view, react, or vanilla. Um, I'm a react developer, so I'm going to choose react and I'm going to hit enter. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to CD into electron byte which i'm just going to do elec with a star um just so i don't type as much um and then we're going to go ahead and run the command npmi this will download all of our node modules it'll populate our package lock file based on everything that we um we're going to add in a couple of different ones here too um so what we're going to start with we're going to do npmi byte tech ts config paths all right so now we have that so what we want to do is we want to go to byte config um and so we have all these plugins here uh what we're going to do is we are going to import um byte or uh, ts config paths equals uh, or from um byte tsconfig paths and then right here after react we are going to do tsconfig paths as our plugin and we are going to run that so we're going to put this in here and then we'll end up running the application um so what i love about byte is you can do npm run dev that way you know for a fact you're running in a dev environment for one and it looks like everything is loading this time so so once you run that, you're greeted with this window. Um, if you're familiar with Webpack, um, you can already determine that this is, I mean, marginally faster. Um, there was hardly any bundling time. Um, and then all this is streamed to a server. So only what you update is actually sent back to you and updated, um, which in my opinion is really good. It takes a lot less load. Um, now there probably won't be much difference between um, the development environments of Vite to Webpack, but for development, um, it is much faster, uh, which is typically what you end up noticing more because when you develop, um, you're constantly reloading the app, uh, restarting the app, depending on what you're doing. Uh, and in my opinion, this is just much faster. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and close this window. Uh, now that we've got tsconfig paths set up, we have a source directory which is basically where all of our um, stuff is set up, which is where all of our React stuff is going to go. Um, so we have some Vite stuff. We want to leave that there. We have a main TSX, which we use the React DOM client to create the root, and then we render the uh, root element. Um, then this is our app file. This is where everything we saw there was uh, working. So what I like to do uh, when creating React things uh, is I like to create some folders in here. I like to do like components, you know, and then uh, we can drag, say like app in there. Uh, then if we go to main, we should be able to, yep, already automatically updated it. 
that's fine. Inside of app, we are going to want to do dot dot slash app dot scss. Um, we should probably do npm add uh, less or tech d less. So that way we can support the less uh, preprocessor. Uh, clear the console. Now we can support less files instead of scss files because I don't really code with scss at all. Um, so we'll be using less. Uh, but yeah. So now our project is completely set up for components, um, SCSS if you or, or less and SCSS if you'd like to use either of those. We can go ahead and create a data folder here. Uh, and I like to create something inside of here for interfaces. I like to create another folder for objects, which are like enums, classes, and stuff like that that are not components. Um, we can probably create a utilities folder. And yeah, we can leave samples. Probably, let's see why we didn't. Um, this takes care of IP stuff, it looks like. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, now we have the utilities, data, and components, right? So our components, again, this is strictly just components, React components. This is what will go here. You can do functional or class components, it's fine. Um, we can talk more about those in a different video and what different components do and creating different components. Um, as well as just React in general. Um, there will be a video up on that soon. So let's go ahead and go to our TS config. Um, so we have some paths here, which it looks like at is a base directory. So let's create another one. <clears throat> and let's just do this component start. Uh, and components will have all of them. We'll just do s or dot slash s r c slash components, and we include all of those. Um, let's do a one called interfaces, uh, and we don't do the star here because um, in our interfaces we're gonna have an index. So what we'll do is we'll do dot slash s r c slash um, data interfaces. Um, we do that, and then we do dot slash src slash data slash interfaces, and all. Uh, we can do uh, objects, we can do one for those. Uh, this one will star out, because I don't like to do index files for those. Um, data, objects, and there we go. Uh, then we can do one for utilities. C slash utilities. Um, and then if you wanted to, you could create your own folder for styles as well. Um, I normally end up doing that in a lot of my projects. Uh, so yeah. This takes care of our TS config paths. Now we have different paths that we can reference these things from, um, which makes things a lot easier and makes it look way cleaner. Um, so if I were to use this, say, in main, um, I would just do import app from, uh, and then I would just do components slash app like that. And that would uh, be our components class. So then if I were to do npm run dev, our components path, not class. Um, we should have the app. Uh, no SVG. Okay, so we just have to resolve a thing from the app here. Components, because it just didn't. Uh, that, uh, that does slot. There we go. Um, like I said, if I do that, um, so this is what I currently see, um, is this electron byte window. Um, so yeah, if we were to make, say, a change, um, let's say we change this guy to using, like, uh, 2 or 20. Yeah, we'll start it out at 2. Um, then we go up to here, and now our count's 2. And we can see just how fast that renders in. Um, so let's do this. Uh, let's open this up. Go and throw that there. Throw that there. Um, let's change this guy to 20. We hit... S and we see how fast it loads. Now normally if you're using webpack it would rebundle the entire render 
um, if you're using uh, React Hot Loader, um, it would completely rebundle. Whereas Vite um, doesn't do that. It just sends you the file based on what was saved and what was edited. So when your server requests um, through Vite the resource, um, it takes a look to see what files are edited and only sends back those sources in the DOM. There's other one other thing. Uh, you have the Electron. You have the Electron um, environment, which is just extra TypeScript stuff. Then you have a preload, which has an index, um, which is where most of your uh, event listeners are going to go for IPC, um, like your IPC handlers. Then you have the main file, which is where your window's created. Um, so we should be able to add a tag here for as web preferences um, full screen. Uh, then we can do true. So what will happen, or I think maximize is what we want, right? Or is maximized. Yeah, we'll do full screen. Uh, and then if we do npm run dev, we should see that take back to our application should be full screen. Yep, so our application immediately launches full screen. Um, and yeah, that's how you would change stuff like that. So if we wanted to hit F11, we could make it go out of full screen. Um, then there's, I know there's another one that's like, is maximized um, that you can do. We can change our title to this is a byte application. Uh, and then we can just do npm run dev. Any time you make changes in Electron, you have to restart. Um, the application because the main process codes compiled differently whereas your renderer codes compiled completely within byte obviously um so now we have a full screen window application um just by doing some electron changes but anything um to do with electron ipc uh you can do in here um and add all that code there for yourself. So it also gives you kind of like a uh, directory structure on how things are supposed to be layered, which you have dist electron here with a main, um, which is the index.js, which is basically that file compiled into one. Um, and then you have the map, and then we have the preload, uh, which is the preload file compiled down to JS. And then we have that, which is the map for the resources. Okay, um, so that's going to do it for this video. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think, um, what I can do to better these videos for you, and I will see you guys in the next video.